All right. Um, do you want me to share my screen, or Tom, you want to do like last time and do it on your own? No, I mean, you, you, you go for it, uh, Cyril. I like your new haircut, by the way, Cyril. Yeah, thank you. When, when are you getting it finished? <laughs> That's not uh, kind. Oh, I'm sorry. It looks very nice. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to show us. Okay, one sec. Um, so, uh, there were a couple of stuff that I wanted to talk. Um, maybe uh, to start, I'm just going to uh, go through what we uh, discussed last, last time and what we agreed on. Um, so the first uh, thing we discussed and agreed on was uh, that we will use um, type for uh, log aggregation, well, log operation, sorry. Uh, and uh, we're going to use function for metrics. So the first uh, function that transform uh, logs into metric will be, uh, the first operator will be a function. Um, and so we already have this for rate, uh, average over time, and, and the current uh, supported operator. Um, we were talking also about uh, that uh, we want to be able to support uh, this use case. Um, do you see correctly my screen, by the way? Yeah. Yep. So uh, we were talking about the use case of being able to um, um, multiple uh, level passing, to do multiple le level passing. Um, and I spot something by uh, rewriting this. Um, so maybe we can talk about this, which is in this specific case that we wrote, uh, we cannot use the duration here as a metric and at the same time being able to extract bar as a label and level as a label. Um, so the syntax is like this. Um, and I'm uh, just going to tell you again that unwrap uh, allows you to select which label becomes the new log line. Um, and in, in this case, um, if I, if I uh, unwrap the message to be able to um, extract a new label, then I cannot really, well, technically I could do an, uh, another, actually that's wrong, I'm, I'm actually wrong here. I could do another unwrap here if I want to. Um, yeah, I need Yeah, exactly. I could do that. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be if there's like naming conflicts, like yeah. if if the two levels of unwrapping collide in in the namespace. But we have to do like a Prometheus like style like original. What's it? I forgot what the, the keyword they're using. Prometheus. Was. Exported. Yeah. Exported. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we were also talking about filter. So uh, it sounds like everyone was agreeing that we want to uh, support filtering on extracted label. And we really stopped there. We didn't really had a, a new uh, uh, syntax for that. And that's pretty much uh, what we discussed last time. So um, there's one thing that I wanted to start discussing before uh, looking at the filtering which was something we didn't discuss, is uh, the regex one, for instance, has uh, explicit label names when you extract. But the log format or the JSON won't have, well, could have uh, non-explicit. Um, so you could technically extract a lot uh, of label and maybe you don't want. Um, and we didn't talk about how can we limit uh, the labels that we want to uh, Extract um, in the scratch pad that we had, we were talking about. So I'm talking about this uh, kind of example here, where log format here is basically extracting all the possible uh, keys of the log format. Uh, in a case where there's like a hundred keys, maybe you want to be able to uh, limit that, uh, especially for so you no, know, especially for the 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 one that return streams and not metric because metric you can aggregate on and then we can do some sort of uh, um, optimization there. Um, so I think we were talking about maybe, um, so that's that's more for uh, that time to label. Yeah, that's, that's something else. So yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, what's your feeling about this? Like, um, should we uh, allow, um, to select only a couple of uh, key to be extracted in case there is too many of them. 
Um, definitively, uh, Ed suggested that we're gonna return an error if there is like too many. Uh, so too many could be like, if there is like 100 keys that uh, in, in the lock format, then we're gonna return an error because you when know, 100 keys multiplied by, let's say already 50 uh, streams, that could end up into uh, 5,000 uh, stream. So we're gonna have a limit to something like a thousand maybe, uh, or co something configurable. Um, so that's the first step, but also I think we should we should be able to uh, select which one we want to extract. What do you think about this? Yeah, actually, I kind of well, I guess I maybe even assumed that we'd be able to do that, right? Like have after log format some comma separated list of keys that you could extract. I think by default, what you have where it, it just matches everything makes sense, but some limit on that for someone that has a, I don't know, yeah, 100 entries or something, you can error on that and then they'd have to go back in and pick what's important to yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so what, what sh how, how should this look like? Um, we also said that we want to allow renaming uh, and Tom wrote this example here, right? So in this case, does it mean that we will extract all the la the label, you know, from the JSON uh, uh, document and only rename that one, or does it mean that we only extract that one? I, I feel like we were, we we at least at some point discussed whether renaming should be a separate explicit action. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if this was like an intermediate state. What we wrote down here, or this was something we decided on. Do you remember? Uh, we haven't decided on that. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but this is something that um, uh, we talked about. Uh, renaming is something that uh, we should do because yes. there could be clash. There could be clash between uh, names. Um, All right. What I'm suggesting here is maybe there's like two way to solve two two different uh, one way to solve two different problem. One way is like picking. Uh, uh, an implicit set of label and also renaming them at the same time, right? We could, we could say, um, I could do something like this, right? So this will mean that I'm selecting uh, flap and foo. Although this is a bad example because JSON maybe um, the syntax gonna allow you to select a bit more complex uh, property from the document. Uh, but that would be, that would, that would work for, um, Log format, right? So if you have too many properties and, and some of them are uh, clashing, maybe we could have a way of renaming and also just selecting which one. So this will select just two of them and rename them, uh, but you could add one without renaming like this. So I just want to bring this subject to see, see uh, if you guys agree with uh, at least having uh, something like that. And then if, it is, if it's the case, how the syntax should look like. I think having something like this makes sense. You covered a couple of cases, except the one where uh, you would want to keep everything but only rename one. Yes, so that's part of the design doc. The original design doc talks about this. Uh, and um, I don't know about the solution. You're right. Uh, you may have like a, a big document and you just want to rename one. And if you start renaming one, then you, it looks like you need to start picking all of them. You could have a wildcard matcher or something. Yeah, I mean, just like thinking the same. Can't, can't we just have it like log format, not take any parameters and just extract them all by default? When would that not be the thing you want? If you had too many. Yeah. I mean, why like is too many a problem? It's a it's a problem in the case where um, you don't have a vector aggregation on top of it, so you may end up with a thousand stream. Uh, well, it's also why is, why is having a thousand streams a problem? Well, in case you don't want uh, you don't want them. But I like in the logs view, you never see a stream, right? You always see the merged result of all the streams in the logs view. So yeah, yeah, like, so you yeah. Are, literally every message could be its own stream, or it could all be one stream, and we wouldn't really be able to tell the difference. And then in metrics, I feel like you know we have a good use. We have a you know we have a very powerful system for doing aggregations here. So like looking at raw time series is never a good thing. People are trained that way anyway. I yeah. just wonder, like, are we overcomplicating this, and should this thing just extract all of them and not have, take any parameters? 
Yeah, I mean that's uh, we can we we can do that. <clears throat> I would uh, yeah. I would be in favor of it still giving it a parameter to resolve the uh, to resolve the clashes like uh, to to allow any renaming within. I'd be I find it weird if renaming was its own uh, its own little um, keyword mostly because if it's in a separate step to me this would this would be diff this would be difficult once we have. Uh, like a chain of block format and JSON parsing and unwrapping, then it becomes unclear to which it pertains. Okay. The only the only counter argument there, right, is that we're going to need label renaming and, and general manipulation of labels between every like JSON log format regex. They're all going to need the same thing, and it, I I would be upset and disappointed if we had different ways of doing label renaming between different systems. And like, you know, the, the argument for it being a separate like label join style thing is what happens if I want to take a label I've extracted from log format and a label I've extracted from JSON and combine them. And it's like Prometheus. So there's three arguments yeah. why it should be separate. Mm. Um, I don't understand the use case for combining some. Um, I, I also don't see how the extraction will be different because they're all keyword, keyword based. Like right, it's like you just give it a different key. You say this key maps to this key now. I yeah, I mean what we what you were saying there is that they should take the same relabeling format. Log format JSON and regex should all take the same relabeling format. Yeah, I mean the yeah, I don't know. I mean I agree the argument. I don't have a use case for joining between different like log format and JSON extracted labels. Um, I'm just that's just a hypothetical. Um, I mean, so if if uh, selecting just a subset of uh, label is not um, really important, then maybe we can introduce this feature later. Because um, there's another quite, problem. When, yeah, sorry. All I'm saying here is not let's not do this ever. I'm saying let's not do this now. Well, we can yeah, we can skip this for the first version. Um, another problem with uh, being able to relabel, uh, for instance, uh, is the JSON, like. And actually, extracting also is a problem because um, we haven't talked really about the JSON. But what will it, you know, how the extraction does work for the JSON if there's a multi-def document? Uh, should it if if it's only like this, will it um, extract only the first level of def? Um, like in my, in my opinion, yes. Um, and and then you just use unwrap, right? Yeah. <laughs> So How would that work with uh, arrays? I mean, not. I think, or no, I think we said last time that arrays is kind of out of scope. I think we had a, we did have a discussion of some sort with it. What What is a uh, out of scope uh, project? That, like, nested arrays. I think um, is something we yeah. talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think nested arrays is. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's a bit complex, but if you have a nested property. I think nested properties could could be could could be in scope or could be could be done immediately, not necessarily via unwrap. As long as it's really just nested objects, that's fine. As as soon as we hit an array, it won't work anymore. OK. So using uh, unwrap is the solution for nested property. Uh, I don't even think we need to. I mean, uh, unwrap has a special semantic that it, that it uh, sets the value field, right? What we're looking for here still is to see if we want any label extraction in a certain depth. So maybe that was a good picture that unwrap comment. I think that could be pretty common, actually, if you have an object that has, I don't know, a status I mean, code it, that's like two levels deep. The big use case for for this is the Kubernetes events, right? And yeah. they're incredibly multi multi nested. Yeah, I can uh, maybe uh, get one of them right now. The the challenge with treating it as a um, 
as a chain set of unwraps to to unpick like values further down is you can't you can't unpick two different branches right yeah yeah i think you need i think you need like a path access syntax anyway like we did with the uh, flap equals flipped off flop so maybe that was that was maybe the unwrapping then doesn't work and i and i and maybe it's maybe having this path syntax map it onto onto just uh, top level fields maybe that's the way forward and unwrap just has the just maintains the special semantic about what what the new log line field will become value it, it definitely seems awkward to me if if i would have to write json multiple times for the same uh, like nested objects yeah so the the alternative syntax is allowing some sort of a uh, uh, you know, uh, XPath or, or GQ language, where yeah. you can write a where you can write a, you know exactly how you extract this property, but then again, that means that you selectively select each property, right? Uh, which log format seems to be different. So there's like two different behavior in the way log format uh, parser, um, regex parser, and also JSON parser will work. I don't think it's a problem. But hold on, I don't even understand the in, in log format the extraction flat equals flip dot flop. What does that do? <laughs> what is what is? Why do we have like is the is the query? Sorry, David, this was just for renaming. Sorry, David, I didn't quite catch that. Could you just repeat that, please? The um. <laughs> the. Do you see what I'm highlighting? Um, yeah. I, the text is a bit small. I can't quite read it. Um, I'll do it can, you, can you um, can you tell me what this does? <laughs> it's supposed to be doing renaming of the flap property into flip dot flop. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Into flip dot flop. Yeah. I thought I flip dot flop right becomes flap. I read it. I read it. Take flip dot flop and put it into flap. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's yeah. how I read it as well. Yeah, so so I I agree too. Like this should the what's what's highlighted right now should be the receiver, right? And uh, and flipped or flop seems like an access pattern, which in log format we don't have, right? Log format is a single level key value, right? Like Ed, unless like, Ed, Ed, we've had this in English, French, and German accents. Could we just could we just have this in a in yeah, an American, American flip that flop. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Right, I think. Yeah, your point's right, David. Like, there's no dot in log format. Yeah, it right, would just be this, yeah. flap yeah. equals flop or flap equals flip. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we will have fun here. Um, wh where does this clashing now is? What is this one up here? Can you scroll it up? Uh, yeah, so, um, that was right. that was the old way of saying uh, which which uh, label will become uh, the value for the metric. Okay. We finally we finally decide that uh, the metric will always be the log line. So the log line itself needs to be a uh, possible plot. So that's and you're going to use unwrap for that. Okay, cool. So this is uh, yeah, we just need to uh, uh, remove that one. Cool, but then but then the interesting. Like in my eyes, the interesting thing here would be uh, this sort of pattern, right? Where you're where you're saying I, I'm, I'm accessing multiple paths yeah. in, in the JSON tree, uh, and they're gonna land in these top level fields. Yeah, yeah. Which um, I uh, just passed a big example of uh, what we want to cover, and we already have uh, an issue for that, uh, which is the event router, which has a very Okay, and then Complex. semantically, and then semantically here, here we're saying we do want buzz, right? Does this also mean here we're only extracting extracting flip flop and bar buzz? Or? Well, for the, that's that's what I was saying. Is for the JSON, 
um, if we go down the road of you, we use using a format, uh, using a language to extract, we don't really have a choice. You need to be, uh, you know, explicit about each property you need to extract. Um, uh, okay, so so we want to we, we, we want to distinguish between either everything or only the ones that we select, right? Yeah, let's uh, sum up the uh, issue here. I feel like maybe we should have a second syntax there where we say where we say we don't want particular ones. That would be like something like this. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't really work for JSON, right? If we go down the language of extracting uh, the label. Because does that mean in JSON extract all the first level? Uh, OK, sorry. Okay. No, that, was, that would have been. Should we pawn down the JSON, since that's, I believe, out of scope for the first iteration? Um, I think I put it back on the first iteration. Oh, is it? I didn't get that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if it's back in scope, then I hadn't. Uh, I would like. I would. I would pick something like this, where it says extract everything except these. Yeah. And then, if you need to uh, escape, exclamation mark. Yeah. I don't. Know. But yeah. I just want to be clear because then because this makes no sense. I'm going to remove this buzz here. That's yeah. mm -hmm. I'm still I'm I'm still pretty keen on not having any of this, by the way, and having it as a separate, very explicit step because this this is kind of reading this and I'm like, does that mean I'm only extracting these labels? What happens to the other labels? Like, it's just okay. Yeah. So I... sh should we remove JSON then from the first uh, iteration? Let's write this down. I just want to see what how it feels. Yeah. Let's see, let's do, do some product here. So let's see how this. So this would be, and then this would be. This. Where are we all writing? Oh, here we are. Remember rename. Yeah. Replace, rename, join, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I, I explicitly would say I don't want this use case of like everything but this label. OK. This no. seems like brittle, and it's not clear what we'd use it for, and it's not clear what the, you know, what when you remove some labels, what happens to, you know, you're saying merge these streams together again, I guess, aren't you? This is well, more. Mm -hmm. This is more. This, um, is, this is optimizing for, we're not we're like, do you, do you see the, the huge message down here, like where like where it says message or something, or reason, or like let's say there's another field called detail or source. Yeah, maybe source. Mm -hmm. And then this would be a, this would be a stream value. This would end up, and then if this has like high cardinality in the data structure in the Loki response, this will be uh, this will be represented for each for each stream. Right, and in the worst case, you have you have it a thousand times there. That I, honestly, David, I don't think that's a big deal. That's an optimization there. Okay, like, we should, for sure, we should optimize the the way we return responses if if like repetition in the JSON response is a problem. But this is uh, we shouldn't build a language around optimizing the wire transport. Uh, yeah, no, I yeah. Yes, yeah, that's a good point. The, the removing of a label is something Cyril was asking for and wants to do under a different guise, right? Which is the merge operation to merge two streams together. Yeah, that's yeah. something that um, I think is required at some point. So, so let's, one like, time. let's ignore dropping labels. Um, I think we should exclude that. Okay. Um, yeah, and but uh, the the source is not a valid label, uh, term, right? So if you leave it like that, you're going to have an error. I don't think it's a valid uh, label value. Uh, leave it like what? Be specific. 
if the if you if you select source as a as a label from for a stream, then you're gonna end up with this big JSON blob here as a label value, which which is probably not a valid label value. I mean, we we haven't defined what JSON does when it unpacks, um, but I would suspect it would unpack it to be source underscore component, source underscore host, source underscore. Yeah. I agree, or dot, or whatever or the dot, yeah, some, some separators. Yeah. Right, that's my expectation of how that JSON would work, um, and not that it would un unpack it to be source and then a JSON blob, because as we said above, that would require you to have multiple JSON extractions in a single line, which won't work if you want to extract things from different um, forks. Okay. And. Um... How would the uh, just a second uh, in this label rename, right? Um, log format here. So in this label rename, this line here, this this past bit here, foo equals bar, won't make any sense anymore because we can't map onto foo anymore, right? Why can't we map onto foo? Because foo is already a stream here in the front. I mean, it would just overwrite what's in foo, I would imagine. Or you, we, we need to define the semantics. Maybe we don't allow it, or maybe we allow overwrites. But um, I don't see why it, you know, it's a choice we have to make. Yeah. The the, the question here was uh, uh, on the, the parsing and extraction, if there was a clash, things will get prefixed. Was that, was that, was that the idea? Was it exported or something? Or Yeah. Okay, so this would then be exported foo. This would be exported foo. But that's like that's taking bar and putting it in foo, isn't it? So don't you more don't you mean like? I guess we got to write. It. I guess we should sort of write. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh, yeah. So that's yeah. That's taking foo from the message, putting it into the foo label. Well, it's taking foo from the, the exported foo label and putting it in the foo label. Yeah. There's no messages. There's only labels. Well, yeah, at that point, yes. I mean, there used to be before the log format step, right? That's, that, like, well, this, yeah, sorry, this is... This came out of the log formatting. Yes, the log format took the, the value and converted it into labels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if we have this sort of safety net there, then I'm happy with uh, with it being a separate step. Okay. I'm sort of. I just feel like a bit annoyed about it that I can't do it in the same in the same thing because I feel like I'm doing this label extraction. I might as well give it give it some some hints on what to do in a single step. But um, I mean, that that's like. A query planner can optimize that away later, right? Yeah. Um, if you do, if we if we were doing uh, vector aggregation on top of all of this, then uh, if you aggregate by uh, foo only, uh, I would. You don't need to extract all the all the label. Yeah. If, I, I don't know if yeah. that's what you were. I have to go, by the way. Uh, so we, if, if we reached a, a rough consensus that having a separate step for this is, is more desirable than integrating it, or, or are we not there yet? I prefer that separate prefer step for solution. Well. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it too. I'm not, I don't, I don't know why. As long as the, it seems like we haven't entirely agreed on the syntax, but as long as I can remember the syntax better than label replace, I'm happy with it. <laughs> Same here. This is a low bar. <laughs> um. So, JSON regex and log format don't take arguments. And we also said no, no label drop. 
That's mad. Is that is that possible for JSON? I still feel like we need a a JQ type syntax. Yeah, well, regex is the same, right? It takes at least one string as an argument. Uh, all right, I got to check in the other meeting if someone's there. Otherwise, I'll be back in a minute. OK. Thanks, David. Uh, separate steps for label renaming. JSON, regex, log format don't take arguments. JSON extract, well, regex takes arguments, obviously. Yes, that's thing, at least. Um, JSON extracts labels to foo.bar.basil with underscores. I'm not particularly picky on which one. I mean, underscores might be easier to parse. I think uh, people just may be more familiar with dots from the yeah. JQ. Yeah. Um, underscores is shift underscore on most keyboards, so might be a reason to use dots. And we're not going to do a label drop. So what would you be worried about? Command. What's that, Tom? What should we call the label munge command? What is its purpose? Purpose is to rename, um, maybe to join labels, maybe to format labels. You know, should it be label fumped? Log fumped, label fumped. Label fumped like takes takes like uh, string substitutions and assigns them into other labels. And I feel like they should maybe be separate things, label rename and label merge. <clears throat> yeah, I'm wondering why it cannot be renamed also for the JSON. Like, why, why do we, if the name is uh, having a dot notation and you want to remove that dot, why can we just reuse the label underscore rename uh, operator? You can. So, so I don't understand the label mensch. I mean, I'm just, what, what is this function and what does it do? Are we, are we, is it going <laughs> to only do renaming or is it going to support merging, joining of labels? Or is it going to support arbitrary forming of, formatting of labels? Because you, these are all suggestions, right? These are all reasonable suggestions. You could, you could, you could think of, uh, you know, your label rename is relatively obvious, and then is it equals or or arrows? Like, how do we know what the the which way around it is? Label merge supports more than label rename in that you could potentially label merge and label join would allow you to construct labels that have multiple, you know, out of multiple labels. And we do this occasionally in the metrics world, although it's very, you know, very occasional. Probably only done it three or four times. Um, label fumpt would be like a you know, like label merge on steroids, like in that you could string format a label. I don't think we should do that way. Well, the the value or the the label name? The label. The clues in the name is label font. So let me give you some examples. So, you know, this we've got a label rename example up here. You could do label merge would be would be like you know, would be the horrible label join syntax of Prometheus. Right, you tell me what that does. I've no idea. Does it put flip and flu, flip and foo separated by a space in flap? Or does it put flap and flip in, fl in foo? This is fun. Um, <laughs> then there's uh, label join, label merge would do basically the same thing. And I actually, I mean, a little bit of me quite likes label front. And that's like saying fumpt, which would allow you to do like sense foo. I really like label munge. <laughs> it sounds dirty when you say it like that. <laughs> you could do like that, right? Um, oh my god. Oh. So, does anyone think any of these are a good idea? Well, whether they're a good idea or not, people are going to want to do it. 
Right, but it's more this is a question of what we do now. Like, we can extend that yeah. if there's another demand for any of them in the future, we can do it. But I feel like maybe there's no demand for any of these right now, or admit all of them right now. You could, I mean, rename, I feel like for sure. And protect, you know, you could start simply where basically multiple renames accomplish what merge does, right? So if you rename a label to a label that already exists, it's an implied merge. So you could string a few of those together. And then that's simpler maybe than having a, the label merge syntax that we don't understand. Yeah, I think that's... Uh... Yeah. No one. I think we can all agree the uh, label join syntax uh, function in Prometheus is bad. But hold on. I would have I would I would have written this like this here. It's like flip and then comma foo. Comma is... It's all in land there. What, what, what are you, what separator are you using? What's the separator? Hold on. Uh, mer merge doesn't seem to make any sense to me. Um, look like compared to label FMT. <laughs> you like why 3D printed? <laughs> yeah, but, but what is what is what does lab FMT do? Lab label FMT. FMT. <laughs> <laughs> lab. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's definitely for <says> lab. <laughs> so, so I really, I really don't understand. Is it merging or is it just producing a second label, and then? Well, I mean, this would yeah, be. Yeah, I'm this would be taking what's in Foo Bar and putting it in Foo again. So that would be overwrite. But this would just be producing another label that contains a format of Foo. And oh, I guess Bar is. So you're just going to attach another label on both of those streams. That's what that's doing. Well, there's, there's, we don't know how many streams are there, right, David? So it could be, there could be 100 streams here. There could be one. Yeah. But we're going to take the Foo and Fat labels and put them in Flip. And then we're going to do a, you know, we're going to do a sum by Flip, right? Which will effectively drop the foo and flat ones. Yeah, but, but okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, I see. Yeah, that's actually. I think that's kind of nice to do that. You put it like that. It, it combines merge with the question of the separator. It's much easier to read, and it's much more powerful because you could put, you know. I mean, it's a fake merge because it, because it's not merging. You just you just you just applying labels to a bunch of streams. They just happen to be the same labels, so you can later aggregate it on top of it. Yeah, and you could if you had like pod name, you could write, you know, Kubernetes pod, right? You know, you could you can put text in there yourself because it's just a string format. Yeah, I would imagine if you take the Kubernetes example, it would probably more often than not be. Namespace slash pod, right? Yeah, for instance. All right, so everyone's agreeing we need some sort of function like that where you can do some sort of magic. I don't think we're agreeing we need it. I think we're just understanding that it's possible. No, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what's, what's I, I, like looking at all of these, the... I, I think I would argue even that like maybe if 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 we would introduce any of these. Only FMT label FMT, I think, uh, would be the thing say, I start with. I say, how is this not covered by label rename itself? Like, why? Like, why don't we just apply that same key value syntax up there? Well, no. Do we even need label rename? Oh, I like, see. You're suggesting label from or label rename, whatever it becomes like. I mean, it's just... the same thing, right? You just you just added a, a templating logic. In the value formatting. So you could support a string or a non-string, which is a, a another label name. Yeah, I added the end wrap to show that you can uh, use that to actually format a log line, a new log line, if you want to. And that's something that um, I think is useful, being able to format a new log line. In some cases, especially the cases yeah. where you have a big JSON blob. Yeah. And you just want to see a couple of property. So being able to use a format on a label and then use that label as a logline is very powerful. Yeah. So I don't like label rename purely because it's got an underscore in it and it's lots of things to type. 
But but where is your love to Prometheus keywords here? Because that's is, we're in the log language here. Like we're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I accept it. <laughs> yeah, and if you um, take out that second L, it saves another letter too. Late is it a uh, label? Yeah, late for more. <laughs> We should, we've no, called it skull. format, so it should be LBL thumped, right? There you go. The should be LBL format or LBL anything too? I, I wouldn't <laughs> mind writing out format either here, but... Yeah, no, you're right. That's probably... If anything's taught, it's like abbreviations are bad. Especially to, I guess, the non-native English speakers as well. It might be harder. Yeah. But now you can't call it thumped anymore. I do like saying thumped. I'm going to include it just for you. <laughs> Pronounce uh, like. There's like in the docs, it'll say pronounced thumped. <laughs> With a PH. Just, just spell the same. Yes. <laughs> like, well, um, cube cuddle has a pronounced cube cuddle, right? Yeah, exactly. So just to recap, uh, we want to introduce only label format. Um, and for JSON, all the label name will be uh, extracted with dot notation. Uh, and we extract all of them, except arrays. We've decided dots. Um, are we going to go with label format like this? Are we going to go with these arrows, or are we going to go with equals? Oh, the arrows, I don't know, yeah. I think I like the equals better. but I do like the equal, too. Yeah, equals. So if it's a string, then you can do uh, templating. If it's not a string, then uh, it's another label. Yeah. Which anyway you could do. You could do with uh, with all uh, only string because you can have only the label. Let's. So uh, that's let's just uh, like a syntax sugar. Let's call this one roughly agreed and move on to the contentious one, the final one. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's, the, what's, what's the final one? Omit all. We're going to do filtering. Ah, oh, filtering. Oh, my God. Yeah, so ah. I gave a proposition. Um, yeah, I gave a proposition from my last uh, PR. Um, I don't know if you have time to look at it. I haven't. No, I haven't. Sorry. What's the... Uh... Um, sorry, I'm just going to... Yeah, so... I use the operator filter. Uh, here's an example. Let's let's take that back into the document. So I really, really dislike that we now have another syntax for doing filtering on labels. I I agree. I really like to have our label matching syntax, but the the part that I'm not sure about is like this greater than or less than like introducing that construct into the existing label matcher feels sort of just as weird and dangerous to me as adding another keyword. And this is you this is because we want to only look for slow requests, right? So this is a hard requirement. Yeah. 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 But and isn't also this yeah. possible after after we've moved to metrics? Why does this have to happen here, this filtering? Well, because you don't, when you do metrics, you don't have logs, and there's maybe more content attached to the log, like a trace ID that you want to be able to see. So yeah. Let's, let's just hear out, um, hear, hear that out, because you might be able to do something like uh, um, unwrap latency, unwarp. Unwarp. Oh, I like it. Um, no. Or what 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 keyword have we got for kind of turn this into a time series where latest value I think is what we said. Although we didn't really No, like... um we said that we don't need one, that the unwrap is gonna be enough, and we said that we're gonna do like a, a operation okay. on it. Something like that then. So if you have unwrap, so that's the syntax we want to come up. But like this is unwrap is gonna make the value still be a string, isn't it? Yeah, but the fact that we you have this so the first function that um, that you use will transform the the log line into a metric. That's the last thing we said last time. I feel like there's a different. I feel like am I mean 
your there's an there's a bit of magic going on here. There's an implicit conversion between a string value and a time value and a sorry a value value a number yeah. value. Uh, I'm not entirely sure we actually landed on it. I think we still have some notes up there that suggested um, using the value function. Let's just, for the sake of argument, let's do the value yeah. function. But this is now a time series. I think we said the value function would be the first function. Yeah, exactly. So even without latency, just JSON. I don't know, but we had to say um which one yeah exactly and then you could do greater than 10 like that right yes but then what this returns a time series this this here is logs this is a time series of time and latency as the value and this mm -hmm. then tells you only ones where the value is greater than 10. You know, you could even filter by um, status code by doing. Oh, let's see. We're looking for slow but successful queries. Yeah, but how do I see the trace ID of those slow queries? It's going to be in a label. It's going to be in a label of the value, a label of that time series. This is going to get you one time series per request, basically. Per log line per log, per line, log yeah. line is my something to request yeah. so the, the question that i have with this because i like but it's like how would you turn that back into a query to actually see the log uh, line if you wanted i guess you kind of can't right like you're just going to have to look at all the labels to you you kind of like i i realize i'm over overloading the the word but like you unwrap it right you like rewrap it you can you wrap it so um, the reason I like that filter latency greater than 10 is there's just a lot of cases where just reading the log line is really handy, right? Like there's a lot of context. It's already formatted in a way I can read. Just show me the 30 slowest. No, you're, you're, you're right, Ed. Like that's definitely a problem with this approach, right? The, the thing we've got away is no, I have, we've managed to achieve here a, a solution to that problem without introducing any more keywords. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it. so back to back to where this is being produced into time series, you're saying there's a, there's a JSON property with high cardinality and, and they all produce their own time series, then this will be one, one data point, right? Every, if there's, yeah, if there's, a, if there's a trace ID in a label, then yeah. effectively every log line will be its own time series. Yeah, but with just one data point. With a single yeah. data point, yeah. Okay, so you sort of have to plot this in a scatter plot or something. Otherwise, this is going to be at totally pointless to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're effectively going to get a list of events. Yeah, but they, they are data points, so unreadable, difficult to read. Well, I mean, it's like, again, let's not let the, like, the JSON response from the Loki API, like, we can figure out ways of presenting this nicely. No, it's not yeah. just about well, the response. The log line has disappeared. The log line is just in the labels now because we lost it. Yeah. The, the, the log line was, well, let's call this log format instead of JSON. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, in terms of like Grafana displaying this, this will be as many like single data points as there were trace IDs, right? Correct. This will be as many series as there were trace IDs, which is as many yeah. series as there were requests. With each of them possibly only having one data point. I mean, the way I would, I would, I would construct this in the back end that there would be a limit on the number of series we could return. Okay. Right? This query would fail unless you narrowed the time range down or yeah. made the filter big enough so that it was reasonable to display it. Yeah. Or you like omit the field trace ID via some other function. I mean, you want the trace ID, right? Because we're trying to find the trace ID for a slow query. Oh, I see. Yeah. OK. So yeah, I mean, you could we could reintroduce rewrap, right? You could rewrap this on trace ID and get back a list of basically log lines of trace IDs. 
What are we trying to solve there with the with the rewrapping now? I don't, I don't, I don't, no, I don't think we could do that, right? I think I, I think this is a good enough solution to the problem. I think so as well because like the it's kind of similar to uh, charting a histogram on a heat map or calculating the P99 or something, right? Like you can do either. Um, the P99 is something you would probably do first, and then you look at it on the heat map or something. And you can do the same thing here, right? Like you first um, see that there are these values or how many values there are of this kind, and then you kind of um, remove this and find the actual log line and a trace ID. And like the user experience can still be kind of figured out for that, I think, but like drilling down essentially um, is a possibility from here. I think that it, I think it's a lot simpler to do filter latency greater than 10 and easier to just be able to immediately see log lines that. Right, but the, the problem I've got here is there's an implicit conversion between a label string and an integer twice, right? <clears throat> this, has that, that, this has made that conversion really explicit. Let's just. Um... There's, a, there's another con here is that this one here is limited by 1,000 1, by default. This one is unlimited here. But pro here is it's probably easier to read, right? Well, it's also easy to you know build the query uh, as you go because it's limited by a thousand results, right? So the first time you get way more and there's nothing that you want, but as soon as you enter latency bigger than ten, you get another thousand, which is all the one that you want. Uh, the value one here is going to return you so many time series if you have a high throughput uh, logger. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, here I think that we would have, you know, if we went down this path, we would have to say, you know, metrics expressions coming out of Loki can't re return more than a thousand time series. We'd have to just put that limit in, right? Well, yeah, simple. Not just time series, right? It's also no, no, I'm, I'm, I mean time series there. You could have a time series with a thousand samples in each. That's not a particularly big time series. Yeah. And to be honest, we're going to have to have a limit on the number of series we return anyway. I think uh, Cortex has it anyway. It's just like when people do silly queries that would turn a million series, they would rather find out quickly than break everything. Yeah. I don't. The thing is, I just really don't like this implicit conversion, right? Because what happens if latency contains a string? What happens if it contains an S on the end of it? So it doesn't return it. Right. The fil yeah, in, that, in this case, the filter just silently drops it, probably, right? Yeah. yeah. In this case, I would say you fail the query because there is no way to, to value latency out of the value the latency flag field. I mean, and that's, a, that's actually a really big question. I don't know. I don't know about most this. Most of these are going to contain like, units, like they're going to contain MS or seconds. or So actually, we're going to need some, you know, this value here. Yeah, that's actually a really big problem. Like, uh, yeah, specifically yeah, with latency the, yeah. and Go, this is a huge problem. Yeah. But the, the, the other problem that I have is you're saying that if uh, latency is not a flood, then we should fail. I don't agree with that. I think it's a bad idea to do that. The reason why is you cannot force everyone for a single stream to have the same label all the time. Someone's not going to have, at one point, the latency not in the log for the same stream. And then you're going to fail him just because the latency doesn't exist there, or is different. Right, but in that case, I would, if you're, if you, I mean, you, the, the thing I don't like is silently dropping stuff, because I'm going to write a, a, an SLA query, and there's going to be a failing, um, there's going to be a, a log entry that says this request failed, and it's not going to say the latency. And I'm just going to therefore quietly exclude all failing requests from my latency metric. Yeah, but the like, alternative is not valid too. Well, the the alternative is, you know, we 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 tell users that you know we do this in Prometheus, right? If the query is invalid, we don't just silently return no results. We tell them the query is invalid, right? And like the great example here is joins, right? Joins in Prometheus, 
sometimes work and sometimes don't work, right? They sometimes don't work. If you get a sample set where you do like foo times bar and foo and bar's labels happen to match, then it will work. But if you do a foo times bar and the label don't match, they won't, then, then Prometheus will return an error. It doesn't just silently only do the ones that do work. I've, I've, this is you have to do like join left group left or whatever I forget it but we have this in the Kubernetes mixing all the time where it works on my machine but when you run it on a multi cluster box it fails. You have you have to fail in a way you know with an error message that users can see otherwise like how do you trust the results? Yeah, we're gonna. I, have I think there's a, a middle ground here where you can return a result with an error message right or with with additional data. So I think the trouble with log lines is it's going to be impossible to guarantee that you're not going to have inconsistencies in a log line. And there's nothing they can do about that, right? Like the option would be like the query will always fail. Well, there's two, right? You're stating there's nothing they can do about it, right? Well, I wonder whether like if we accept that the query will, should fail when, when it can't do the translation, whether we can then provide them with the tools such that they can opt in to dropping stuff that doesn't match. For instance, like you could do a, a filter here that is like label matches something, right? And this is basically saying, I've got these the wrong way around. This is saying it must have a label. It must have a latency. All right, I got to go. You see, David, this would say, this would say like, I only want to return things with, with a latency, right? You could even, you know, if you know you've got late, if someone's emitted latency values of like, I'm a teapot, you could say, you know, latency is not. Ah, I can't do not in this keyboard. There it is. Not, you know, teapot. You know, you've given them the tools to filter out the bad values, but they have to opt into that process. You're right. This is controversial. <laughs> I feel, I really feel like we have to we have to fail on invalid data and not just silently ignore invalid data. Well, I'm okay to meet you halfway and saying we send back a warning. So the pro the only challenge with that, right, is we do this in Prometheus when remote read fails. Is we send them back the data that succeeded and we send them back a warning. Do you know how many UIs display that warning? Yeah, but for the other argument, you say we should not take care about the UI and the... Uh, right, the, the problem is no UIs ever show the warnings. Grafana doesn't. <laughs> Prometheus UI doesn't show the warnings. Mm -hmm. Like, this this is a, by design, bad API to, sh to show you values with that. And then oh, another great example is the DynamoDB API, right? The DynamoDB API, if you send it a write, you send it a batch of 100 writes, right? It will return success, and then in the body of the success message, it will say, "Oh, I only I didn't write a hundred of these writes." By the way, you're like, "How is that success?" But it will tell you, "Oh, it's a partial success. It's success, but there's a hundred writes I didn't write." I'm like, "But that means failure, surely?" The you can't yeah. build APIs that kind of have part. You know, you you should avoid in in almost all circumstances partial success and failure. Because, so uh, since um, since we already have a way uh, to like the you know filter with the label to solve this problem, could we have a query string that tells the behavior of the of all of this if it's like very strict or not strict? And then if someone really wants uh, to not be very strict, yeah, I mean, this is what we do in Panos, right? Where yeah. we where we say like by default, um, like a partial failure is a failure, but you can optionally say, for this one query, I'm accepting a partial failure and show me the result. That's the what I wanted in Prometheus as well, by the way, except for Brian said no. I would like, yeah, I would like a way to change the behavior, um, just because it's can be difficult. I feel like that's a reasonable, um, a reasonable compromise in that there's, a, there's an extra field that says I allow partial failures. But I would like, Give it a long, hard think about like having the semantics of functions change based on an extra field because you'll you'll have people share queries, and the queries will work for some people and not for others. Yeah, yeah. This is a conversation that we have all the time that like share shareability must never be broken. Essentially, like when I 
share a link with you, you must see exactly the same thing as, as I see. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the defaults have to be sensible, i.e. we have to yeah. not default to partial failure. In which case, like, we should really only be building for defaults, in my opinion. Give it some thought. We got really. I think we're really close. I think this is the last thing left to decide before we're before we're done with the language. Yeah. So don't you uh, agree that having value here uh, and then after on top of it average uh, with a, a duration is, is a bit a lot? Like I, I, did, I really. You need the average. I don't see why you need the average. I think this is. No, but yeah, there's a lot of order operation that you, aggregation of the time that you want to do on those extracted data. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm just I, talking I, about I, the value I, itself. You're saying make value implicit. I, I refer you back to no magic. Like uh, we rate is implicit. Okay. Like we could have just said rate. We could have said rate is implicit, but we said rate is explicit. Like we have to be explicit here. Well, currently rate is transforming the log line into uh, a count. Well, it's counting. And so value, value is transforming a log line into a time series. Yeah, but the rate is a aggregation of a range, not a, a transformation of a time series. Yes, they do different things, but their, their type signature is the same. Well, no, because there's a range. OK, the time series is sign their type signature is subtly different. <laughs> but it, they, yeah. they achieve very similar aims, right? They, they, they help you translate from the uh, log entry space to the time series space. And you know, there's really only three, two slash three functions that allow you to do that: value, rate, count. I think, right? Well, yeah, there's byte also now. Okay, value, rate. Yeah, the, there's a very small number that allow you to move between these. Two there's rates. four of them currently. What's the four, what? So rate, count, bytes. Byte over time. Okay, bytes and bytes over time seem like a sum over time. Um, oh. type thing. And uh, and we're we're suggesting our value. But I've got to run. I'm five minutes late for my next one. Sorry. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Right. See ya. See ya. See ya. Thanks, everyone. Right.